Rose. I should say so, Mr. Lawrence. This is your grandfather's Madeira. Come in, come in. You don't see a war ended every day. Gentlemen. And ladies. You'll forgive me for having omitted you, but in my day, the fair sex graced the home and not the office. <laughs> I should like to propose a toast. This is the third war the Hamilton family has helped to win. The third occasion in our history we have had to Bad turn from peacetime toast. manufacturing to wartime production. 1860, 1898, 1917. Lincoln, McKinley, Wilson. Three commanders in chief. We serve them and our country to the best of our ability. So now let us drink to peace. Peace and prosperity to all men, everywhere. Oh, yes. My son and I would like to declare the remainder of the day a holiday. <laughs> Mrs. MacDonald, you seem to be taking all this very calmly. Oh, I'm not calm. I'm so excited I can hardly breathe. Really? This means my husband will be coming home. Oh, from France? How long has he been over? Only since August, but it seems years. He was lucky to get there. I tried, but they ordered me back here to my job. Perhaps it's more important. But I'll never feel right about it. And I'm not married, no ties. Nothing to hold me here. Well, even if you had, you'd still want to go. Like John, if he'd been forced to stay home, nothing could have made him feel right about it either. Not even you? <laughs> Not even I. And I tried. Well, where's everyone gone? <laughs> My father declared a holiday, didn't you hear? I'm afraid I did. <laughs> What does Mrs. McDonald do here? Stenographer? No, she's straightening out the research library. Doing it very well, too. Husband's overseas, you know. Yes, I know. Lucky man. surprise for you. Stay where you are, I'll be right out. What is it? I'm coming in. No, you don't. You stay right where you are. Oh, that's not fair. At least tell me what sort of a surprise. Oh, it's a new suit. I went right out and got it all by myself without you. 
Oh, aren't you getting to be a big boy? Are hey, you standing near the door? Right smack up. Well, then back away a little. This is kind of an unusual suit. It needs a certain perspective. Now, if you're playing some sort of trick on me. Here I come, ready or not. Asking me to say something, or is it too late? Depends. I don't expect you to show much enthusiasm for just another blue surge, but this. Sweetheart, you know I've got to go, don't you? I'm not sure why. I knew you wanted to. Who wanted to? Honey, if you don't do something about it yourself, they come after you. You wouldn't like to have them crawl up under the house for me, would you? Why didn't you tell me? I was afraid. But, John, your work, you're accomplishing so much here. It just happens I've made a very good deal with them. I start off with the very top pay for a second Louis. Did you get it in writing? Oh, sure. A contract? Honey, I've got the army tied hand and foot. I can't make a move without their permission. Uh, darling, I might have known you'd out with them. What else? No fighting. None at all? The very first gesture of unfriendliness by the enemy, of bugle blows. The whole business stops dead until I'm removed to some place of safety. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss you. Miss me, but don't be scared. I have to let you go, don't I? Yes. Let me love you my own way. Let you love me in your own crazy way. Promise me you'll come back. Promise not to forget me. Oh, John. Donald back from lunch yet? Well, I heard her say she was going home at noon. It's quite a ways. I I'm sorry, I'm late. Well, aren't you feeling well? Oh, yes, I'm quite all right, thank you. Some water, quickly. Mrs. McDonald, she's fainted. Ambrose, Brandy. Yes, Miss Lawrence. Where does Mrs. McDonald live? Over on George Street, I think. With her family? No, she lives alone. Get the car and bring it around front. Yes, sir. I'll see to her if you'll help her to the car. Still up there. I know he's still up there. What did he say? Is she very ill? Larry, who is this girl? Her name's McDonald. She works in the office. She's going to have a baby. Her husband was killed in the war. She was very much in love with him. I'm afraid the next few months are going to be rather difficult. Do you think you could keep her here and look after her? After all, she can't very well go through this thing alone. No. Of course she can't. She was so happy when she thought her husband was coming home. Now he's dead.
Give me something to finish it, won't you? Quiet. That's not much to ask. You must be quiet. At home, they'd shoot a dog that had been smashed by a truck. Why don't you let me die? Yes, it's Gus Holding sauce. That's what the other doctors say. It means hopeless, doesn't it? Hopeless. Yes, that's what it means. Hopeless. But I don't agree with that. It's difficult to say this well. Perhaps I cannot say it at all, but I will try. For me, you are not only a man. You are mankind. You do not want to live. Very well. But what I learned from you will one day help me to heal men who do want to live. I want to die. To die. Elizabeth. It's signed only Elizabeth. You still refuse to tell us who she is? Is this Elizabeth, your wife? Don't you want to let her know that you are alive? You do not seem to understand. When you were picked up on the battlefield, there was nothing on you but this one letter. Your identity disc could not be found. If they were, you will probably have been officially reported as dead. You call this being alive? If you had lost both arms, or even if there had been blindness, we could do so much for you. Life can still be good. You mean I have my eyes, but no face? My friend, there's such a thing as plastic surgery. We can give you a face. But what we cannot give you is a name. Stop asking me who I am and do what you please with me. Give me any name you like. Do you realize that your wife has almost certainly been informed that you are dead? She's mourning for you. Grieving for you. She's young and no children. Nothing to hold her to me. Nothing. Only pity. There's much more than pity. There's great love and great need. As long as you are alive, there's love for you, for your very disabilities. She would want to be your hands, your feet, every part of you that has been hurt. I can only heal you. But she, she can make you whole. Dr. Ludwig, what's the most you can promise me? The use of an arm, the power to hobble on a crutch. And for this fragment of my life, you'd have me destroy the whole of Earth. Heal what you can, but do what I ask you, Ludwig. If you don't, I swear to you, I'll end my life as soon as I have a hand to do it with. You give me no choice. I must help you to make this very terrible mistake. Yours is a great lad. And you are doing it a great one. Florence behaving like a kitten instead of a fat old cat. Oh. Here's Larry to see you. How are you, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm afraid I'm very lazy. Miss Hamilton doesn't let me do a thing. Nonsense. You're being company for a fussy old maid. Mm. This package came for you yesterday. Thank you. I might have known what was in that package. Oh, no. 
don't know. Oh, I'd like to see you. Lieutenant John A. McDonald. A's for Andrew. That's a good Scottish name. His father was born in Scotland. Once we went to a fancy dress party and I made him wear kilts. He hated it. He looks so handsome. gave him this the night before he sailed. We had a whole week together in New York. It was August and all the big roof gardens were open. We used to sit out there and look out over the lights of the city. Plan the future. Now there's no future to plan. Yes, there is. Not for John. A man's child is his future. That's what frightens me. If anything should happen, it isn't just another baby being born, it's John. John going on. And If I lost the baby, it would be John dying all over again. This is the part of my job I like best, bringing the baby to its father for the first time. Isn't he a fine boy? Oh, Larry, you're spoiling him. There you are, young fellow. Oh, he simply has no manners. I'll have to say thank you for it. Well, as a matter of fact, this is a compromise. I wanted to get him a puppy. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. He'll be about as much as I can manage when we go home. Home? We can't stay here indefinitely. Well, I, I have an idea about that. An idea? Yes, I, I think you should sell that house. I mean, I, I don't think you should go back there again. I know what that house has meant to you. I admit I've been dreading it. Is that being a coward? No, I don't think so. Look, Elizabeth, I have a house in mind for you. A different kind of house. For sale or for rent? Well, it's an old house with big rooms and high ceilings. It's been a happy house. It has a beautiful garden. It leads right down to the river's edge. It would be a fine place for that young man to grow up in. Larry, it's your house. It's yours. If you want it. It's no use pretending I didn't know that someday you'd say this. I've even tried to work out an answer in my mind. You see, Larry, for the short year that John and I were married, I was unbelievably happy. If John had lived, I might have been disillusioned, but he didn't live. Now I'll never be disillusioned. Don't you see if things had happened differently? You might be a different sort of woman now. Perhaps I shouldn't love you. It's been so wonderful to me. I, I can't even talk about it. I've got to be honest with you. I'll never love anyone else the way I love John. You haven't told me yet whether you're going to marry me or not. But I want you well, to Elizabeth, be sure. Look, I think he's got a tooth. Hmm? No. Look. Let's see. Yeah. Well, John Andrews, I'm here. <laughs> what are you?
do you think of calling him Drew? Drew, it looks as though your brother were in trouble again. Come and help me, people. I can't reach it. Ah, oh, you cracked the stabilizer. I thought I heard you. You're home late. Drew wanted a game of golf. In this heat? I know. I'm a sucker. You know he's playing a darn good game. Did he beat you? Of course not. I won by two strokes. <laughs> hey, Dad, can't we have a game of softball before we go in? Sure, we'll all have a game. You too, Liz. It's too hot, and don't call me Liz. Oh, come on, Liz. Now, look, one of you being fresh is enough. Yes. But... Hello there. <laughs> Back from Washington already? Game Street here. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Just the Hamilton ball team, that's all. Hello, Mr. Norton. Good afternoon, Mr. Norton. Come along inside. Sorry, oh, boys. Hello, there. Oh, gee, there goes our game. Can't be helped. You better pick all that stuff up. Cheer up, Brian. I'll help you with this. You talking with my plane, too? Two highballs, Daniel. Yes, sir. Anything wrong? Well, the news Mr. Norton brought from Washington isn't exactly good. Business? Indirectly. They expect Poland to be invaded any minute. You don't think? It doesn't mean war for us, does it? Perhaps not. Uh, just being an alarmist, I suppose. Was considered. Thank you. Think you can go on from here? Sure. Drew. Drew, it's six o'clock. See if you can get the news, will you? In the last war, we had to wait and read it in the papers. Well, this war will seem much closer. It isn't war yet. It is impossible at this moment to see how war in Europe can be avoided. It is nearing dawn in Poland. Germany stands ready at her border. It must have been dreadfully hot her in Washington, Mr. Norton. I had an uncle who worked in the Congressional German Library. He used to say that Portland even the books got limp. Dancing. Please, Mother, invasion, we're trying to listen. not already started, waits only for the order to march. Two days ago, the German Chancellor's demands were given Boy, to Sir Neville Henderson. This is it. The time limit for their acceptance is impossible to meet. Both Great Britain and France have pledged their support to Poland if Germany attacks. The German Chancellor has placed the affairs of the in the hands of the six-man Council for the Defense of the Fatherland. The last hope for a peaceful settlement has apparently vanished. Blast it, Germans, there's no stopping no them. Arrived to discuss proposals oh, sorry, to forgot you, I jammed. Austrian. This announcement no need to be frightened, you know. Just a man speaking over the, the wireless. He remembers the day the Nazis marched into Vienna. Poland is completely No. Have we forgotten all the English we learned in London? London, May? We were there this past year. She speaks quite good English very well. So do you. Thank you. Come on, Margaret. It's past your dinner time. And what with the excitement of arrival and all, she's not eaten quite regularly. Well, Margaret, we get a good night's sleep, and then in the morning we wake up. Pardon. And see the Statue of Liberty. We don't want to miss that, do we? No, Father. 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 Splendid. You know, Margaret? Pretty soon you'll speak English as well as any little girl in America. La situation est très grave. All right, there you are. Next. Kessler. Kessler? Eric. That's that letter from State. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, Eric Kessler, chemist. Born Vienna. Here we are. And daughter Margaret. You're entering the country as a specialist. I see you have a clearance. Uh-huh. Are you staying in New York? No, I, I go straight on to Baltimore. Baltimore? But there's a letter for the visa. Oh, yes. Yes, I know. I've seen it. Well, they seem to have got your papers in good shape. Uh, would you mind stepping over there just for a moment, Mr. Kessler? Thank you. Margaret. Doctor. Oh, yes, Inspector? What about this man, Doc? There's the report on his physical examination in London. It's not too hot. 
question. Are we allowed to leave now, Father? I think so, Margaret, just a moment. Well, he isn't coming here to dig ditches, you know. I wouldn't worry about him. Oh, thanks, Doc. Mr. Kessler? Doc. Everything seems to be in order. There you are. There you are, honey. What's next? Renault. Renault. Yeah. We should not stay here. But you said we would make our home here. It may be better to go. I do not know. We would leave? For the same reasons we left Vienna? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. America is a big country. There are other cities. Fine cities. Somebody here, Father? No, Margaret. As you can see, nobody lives here. It's just an empty house. Old house. Nobody lives here. Uh, excuse me. Hey, can you tell me how long this house has been vacant? Well, nobody's lived there for the last two or three years. Do you know who used to have it? Yeah, an Italian family by the name of Spumoni or Baroni or something like that. Had a lot of kids. I guess the house got too small for them. Thank you. Shall we go away soon, Father? Go. Said maybe we would leave here. No, I... I don't... I think we leave now, Margaret. There's no need to Kessler, I, I want you to look over these plans for the new plastics division. Now, we've had about the best industrial architects and engineers available, and I think these plans are just about as right as they can be. However, there's been some difference of opinion about the allotment of space for the different departments. And I'm very eager to get your judgment on these figures that we've worked out. Well, I'd like to look them over very carefully before giving an opinion on so important a project. Naturally. Mrs. Hamilton is on the phone. Excuse me. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Could you do me a favor? Bring home six quarts of ice cream. Six quarts? We having a party? Oh, the kids are. Well, what flavor? Oh, let's see. Three chocolate, one strawberry, and two vanilla. Very good, ma'am. Will you be home early? The boys are looking forward to a swim with you. I'd like to see you, too. Well, that's settled. I'll be there. Goodbye. I'd like to look these over by myself, if you don't mind. Of course, but I had hoped that we could... Uh, Thank you. ...go over these things later in the day. Or, should we say five, perhaps? No, I just promised the boys I'd be home in time for a swim. Oh. I'll tell you what. Supposing you work on these this afternoon, Kessler, bring them out to my house this evening and uh, stay for supper. Oh, I wouldn't like to intrude. Oh, nonsense. The kids are having a party, but it didn't disturb us. Besides, there's a director's meeting Monday morning, and I want to push these plans through. So supposing I send a car for you at 6.30 at your house. Oh, that'll be fine. And I'll see you this evening. Thank you. Darling, I forgot to tell you, I've got a man coming out to dinner. My new chemist. The one from England? Is he frightfully British? Frightfully Austrian. A refugee? Not exactly. He's here as a specialist. I'm very lucky to get Kessler. He's bringing out a report to me. Oh, well. 
It's a buffet. One extra for dinner won't matter. By the way, he's pretty badly crippled. An accident? No. The last war. Was he in the German army? Austrian. And they both fought against us. He's a very decent fellow. Come in. I'll go on down, dear. How do I look, Mrs. Hamilton? Good evening, Mr. Hamilton. She looks very pretty, doesn't she, Elizabeth? Yes, but don't be too flattered. Cherry doesn't give a hoot how we think she looks. She's only interested in Drew's opinion. <laughs> oh, I don't know when I've seen you look so pretty. Really grown up. <laughs> Is that the effect you're working for tonight? Uh-huh. Well, let's see. Well, perhaps we can add just one more touch. Oh, Mrs. Hamilton. May I wear them? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to look grown up, Cherry? Drew's only a boy himself. Oh, he'll be 21 next year, and that's old enough to vote and to sign papers and everything. He was talking to me this afternoon, and... Oh, dear, that's our guest, and I should be downstairs. Put the earrings on. in the playroom, Larry. Good. Come along. I'll go ahead and see how the youngsters are getting on. I, uh, I have some notes on the blueprints. I think the plans in the main are very good, but I'd like to make some suggestions. Well, I suppose we look at them after dinner. Well, I, I, I don't want to disturb your guests. Well, you're not intruding. Besides, I want you to meet my boys. Well, Mr. Hamilton, there is something I want to talk to you about. I don't know whether I'll be able to stay on here in Baltimore. Oh, Mr. Kessler, surely you couldn't think of leaving us now just as we're beginning to lean on you. Well, uh, it's the climate. My health is not exactly what it ought to be. Well, we'll see to it that you don't overdo it. Just forget about the business tonight and relax and enjoy yourself. Oh, Aunt Jessie? <laughs> Aunt Jessie, I want you to meet Eric Kessler, one of our new chemists, my aunt, Miss Hamilton. What will you drink, a martini? No, no, thank you, nothing. Get one for me, Larry. You know, Mr. Kessler, I'm trying to make up for a misspent youth. I was brought up in the age when women weren't supposed to do anything that gave them a little pleasure. <laughs> Appetizer, Aunt Jessie? What are you eating? Good? Super. My son, Brian. This is a Brian. buffet. You know, lunch counter. We are eating outside. Brian, show Mr. Kessler the table. Okay. Drew, will you get some food and bring it to Mr. Kessler and your mother, please? All right. Put on some records, Pudge. We got some new ones today. Okay. Oh, Mr. Kessler, won't you come out here? This is a table for the grown-ups. You taking care of us, Drew? Yes, Mother. Have you met my son? Drew, this is Mr. Kessler. How do you do, Mr. Kessler? I never would have thought you could have such a grown-up boy. <laughs> Europeans all think that they have to flatter American women. We're supposed to have a youth complex, aren't we? I assure you, I'm quite old enough to have a son 20. 20? I'll be 21 in April. Is there anything else you'd like? No, thank you very much. Mother? Thank you. Everything's fine. Llewellyn. Llewellyn Davis. Punch! Huh? Oh, yes, Miss Hamilton. I have a little of everything. Right. Oh, oh. Oh, not the chow. The boogie woogie. Oh, Drew, would you get Mr. Kessler some coffee? All right, some for you, too? Mm-hmm. Here's your coffee, Mr. Kessler. Sit down, please. It isn't often I... I have a chance to talk to you. 
young men of your country. You're going to college? Yes, University of Maryland. All the family's gone there. I think my great-grandfather went there when it was an old medical college. Besides, it's close to home, and that's not hard to take. What is it, sir? I was thinking what a tremendous thing it is to have a son. Hey, Drew. My sister's looking for you. OK, excuse me. Drew, is that a family name? It's really John Andrew. They call me Drew for short. Savages, even if this party does sound like an Indian powwow. Shall I get you some coffee? I can't hear a word you say. Thank goodness. When they turn that off, I'll turn this on. Since that Jessica got a new hearing device. Something wrong, Mr. Kessler? No, nothing at all. Perhaps I shouldn't have asked you to come out here tonight. Oh, no, please, it's been wonderful. Meeting your sons and your wife. Well, you must come again. I understand you have a little girl. You must bring her, too. Thank you very much. You've been talking to Mother, haven't you? How did you know? You're wearing her earrings. Clever, aren't you? Did you sound her out? What did she say? Well, I just started to when they rang for her, and she had to go downstairs. I can't get over the feeling that I'm in a dream. The music, the dancing, the gay young people. It makes Europe seem very far away. It is far away. Europe, with its wars and its problems, we must keep them far away. Let's hope you can. You don't sound very hopeful. I've seen too much. You were fortunate to get out when you did. Did you bring your wife with you? I have no wife. I have only Margaret. Mr. Hamilton, perhaps you'd better go with these reports. If you think you're not too tired. Of course not. Well, then, if you'll excuse us. What a charming man. So distinguished. Do you think so? Mother, could I talk to you and Dad? Oh, well, yes, dear. Yeah. Wait in my room. We'll be right up. Thank you very much for coming out. Good night, Mr. Kessler. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? Mary, when I was coming down the stairs and saw him standing there, I had the strangest feeling. Anything else, sir? Oh, no, thank you, Daniel. Good night. Good night, Mr. Hamilton. Well, Drew, what are you doing here? I wanted to talk to you and Mother. How much is it going to cost me this time? No, it isn't that. I think I know what it is. Look, darling. I'm terribly fond of Cherry. I think she's one of the nicest girls I've ever known. But you are a bit young, both of you. But, Mother, it isn't Cherry. It isn't anyone. If it were anyone, it would be Cherry, but it isn't. I mean... Now, look, I'm just an innocent bystander, but it would be awfully nice if somebody would explain something to me. Is there something really serious on your mind? I want to join the RAF. The what? The Royal Air Force, England. They need flyers. Pudge and Ted Wilkinson and some of the other fellows want to go. You join up in Canada and you get your training there. They need all the flyers they can get their hands on. Of course they do. Then you will let me go? Let you go? So that's what we're supposed to do. But, Mother, if we believe... Oh, please, Drew. Who put this insane idea into your head? If it's Pudge Davis, I'll forbid him the house. But it isn't his idea, it's mine. What do you know about war? You want to be a hero, don't you? Do you know what happens to heroes? They die. Larry, I won't go through this. I can't. I remember the last war, Drew. I know something about it. You don't. Look, 
Andrew, it's late. Why don't you get on to bed and we'll talk about it in the morning? We won't talk about it ever. I won't let him go, Larry. Look, darling, you're tired and upset. Try not to think about it tonight. After a good night's sleep, you'll feel better. Not about this. I'll never feel differently. Darling, no father or mother likes to see a son go to war. But they hide their feelings when he does go. But there is no war. He hasn't been called. You can't ask me to give him up. Elizabeth, I don't want to see him go any more than you do. But we must remember that in a few months he'll be 21. Then he doesn't have to ask our permission for anything he wants to do. If anything happened to Drew, it would be John dying all over again. After all these years. Oh, no, no, darling, I'd almost forgotten it. You did that for me. But it mustn't happen to Drew. I, I couldn't live through it. He hasn't gone yet, and nothing has happened to him. Oh, Larry, talk to him. Try to make him understand. I wish I could. I don't want this to be the one thing I can't do for you. Margaret? Why aren't you in your bed? I was reading my new book the teacher gave me at school. She says, if I study hard, I will speak English just as good as she does in one more year. Oh, that's fine, but you ought to be asleep by now. Did you have an agreeable time at Mr. Hamilton's house? Very agreeable. Is it a pretty place? A very pretty place. Oh, they tell me the next time I visit there, I should bring you along. I was bad. There are children there? Two. Oh, uh, boys. As old as me? Getting older. One is 12 or 13, the other is 20. 20? That is almost the man. Yes, it's almost the man. Bad now. Your medicine. I'll get you some water. Oh, I don't want to take my medicine. But you won't sleep unless you do. All right, I'll take it later. Good night, Margaret. Good night. selfish if I saved some especially lovely thing for when we are together again. It's really John Andrew. They call me Drew for short. Come on, Drew. One ring will put you even. Okay. Here we go. The leader, knock it off, Brian. Right, next count. Gosh. Oh, too bad. You should have had that one. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Good morning, Mrs. Hamilton. And this must be Margaret. Hello. Margaret, this is Drew and Brian. Hello, youngster. How do you do? Well, you've been picking flowers. Well, there's no need to hide them. I don't understand. She comes so recently from a country where so many things are forbidden. Tell Mrs. Hamilton the name of the flowers. These are Austin's, and these are Chris, Sam, Sam, Mom. Wow, that's splendid! 
Come on, Drew. Sorry, can't play any longer. I've got some math to do. Oh, gee, just when I was getting good. Say, how would you like to play horseshoes? I, I don't know how. Oh, Mother will show you. She's the best horseshoe pitcher in the family. Come on, we'll play against the men. Yes. Larry, you take Drew's place. OK, come on, Franny. We'll beat the pants off. <laughs> Margaret, that's American slang. It means to win, but they're not going to. Come on, we'll throw them from here. Now, you hold it like this, and then you throw it like this. Do you think you can get near that pig? I will try very hard to do so. OK, let her go. Oh, but it's so rare. What the heck's wonderful? <laughs> Calculus, eh? How are you at mathematics? I'm an awful dub. <laughs> so was I. What is your favorite subject? History. History, huh? Well, I'm living through such a chunk of it, I thought I might as well major in it. Mr. Kessler, what do you think about the war? Before lunch? <laughs> well, I guess that is asking a lot. But you just came from Europe, and I like to get some first-hand information. It's pretty difficult to get the right slant on it over here. You surprise me. Why? No, you're thinking about these things at all. You're wanting to get a fresh slant, as you call it. <laughs> you should listen in when we get together at the frat house. We do a lot of talking and thinking, too. What do you think? Well, in the first place, we don't think it's a phony war. Of course it isn't. But what makes you think so? Well, someone said that the longest journey starts with one step. Well, the biggest meal starts with one bite. I think Germany has just taken her first bite. I think she means to gobble Europe up, bite by bite. But not America. That's where you're wrong. Europe is just the first course. Germany means to feed on the world. As one of the fellows said, she's a cannibal country. <laughs> I should have brought my soapbox. I am spouting. Go ahead, spout. Sure I'm not boring you? Boring me? Exactly the last thing that you could ever do. Now go on, please. But I, I started this to ask you questions. Why well, ask me? I have no authority. Perhaps you can find some answers in there. If it's true that history repeats itself, the answers are here, if you know how to find them. I read something just this morning about Tom Paine. Perhaps you don't know about it. Well, he said, here it is. A man who kept a tavern was standing at his door with as pretty a child in his hand, about eight or nine years old, as I ever saw. And after speaking his mind as freely as he thought was prudent, finished with this unfatherly statement, will give me peace in my day. You remember, that's what Chamberlain said when he came back from Munich, peace in our time. A more generous parent would have said, if there must be trouble, let, let it be, be in my day that my child may have peace. You know, if I had a son, I would repeat that prayer every day. And what does your father think about these ideas? I haven't said much about them. Oh, but you ought to. You don't know what it means to a father to hear his son speak so. You ought not to cheat him of that experience. Well, he's been pretty busy, and it's a little hard to explain. I know how Mother feels. Any talk of war seems to upset her terribly. And I don't want to stir up any difference of opinion between Mother and Dad. They're both so swell and happy together that Naturally, you avoid anything that might spoil that. Naturally. And I'm not sure that I have any ideas to talk over with either of them. I'm not sure I know what it's all about, except what I mentioned just a minute ago about aggression and conquest. The Nazis call it the new order. Superman and slave people. Actually, they're just trying to bring back the Middle Ages, trying to bring back the past. But why should anyone want to hold back the future? Because the whole idea of the future is a fuller, richer life for more people. These fellows are afraid that more for the many means less for the few. 
So they try to put back the clock. But you can't do that to people now. They won't take it. There's your answer. There's your war. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I learned two more names, Zinnia and Petunia. Shall we have lunch now? Thank you. Come along, Margaret. Oh, swimming's easy. I'll teach you next summer. I'll teach you how to dive. You must be a wonderful swimmer. Well, he always seems to come up. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret's such an adorable little girl, Mr. Kessler. Uh, I don't know. The little boy's been very kind to us. And the big boy is a wonderful young man. Telephone call for Mr. Drew. It's Mr. Pudge. Oh, call him back later. Tell him no, that we No, Mother, it may be important. Hello, Pudge. It's wonderful when you're young, isn't it? And everything is so important. Oh, gosh, Pudge, that's too good to be true. No, not a chance. Okay, see you later. What was it, Drew? Nothing. Well, that doesn't tell us very much, does it? All right, then it's Pudge. He's joining up. His parents are letting him go. Join what? The RAF in Canada. But I don't see why you couldn't tell your mother that. Because he wants to go too, Aunt Jessie, that's why. Drew? You want to join the IAF? But America's not at war. Do you think it won't be? That's what Mr. Kessler and I were talking about, weren't we? Well, Drew, not exactly. After all, these are things that you ought to speak to your parents about. I mean, no effort at all to influence you. Drew, Mr. Kessler's a European. This is Europe's war, and his own country's involved. He didn't expect you to apply his views to us, no matter how sympathetic Please, we may... Please, Mother. When a new world is being born, nothing can stop it. And that's what's happening. A new world is being born. You have to make up your mind. Do you want to help it along or hold it back? I've made up mine. Excuse me, please. May I be excused too, Mother? You haven't finished your dessert. I don't want any more. Please, Brian, you have a guest. And I'm sure Margaret wants to finish hers, don't you, Margaret? It would be very agreeable. <laughs> All little girls like ice cream, particularly pink ice cream. Margaret, when I was a little girl and I had a birthday party, I always wanted the ice cream to be the same color as my dress. But once I remember, I had a blue dress, and I couldn't understand why I didn't get blue ice cream. So I remember how I cried. Wasn't that silly? Elizabeth, the children don't have to wait for coffee, do they? Why, no. Very well, then. Brian, we'll take Margaret down to the playroom and show her your collections. You know, Margaret, Brian is a born collector. Boys, stamps, butterflies. After all, Mother, Drew is old enough to make up his own mind. And if a man can't do what he wants, well... Well, I know how I feel. Well, well I feel like Patrick Henry. Give me liberty or, or give me death. Elizabeth, my dear, you mustn't ever get you like this. He was just being a funny, earnest, unhappy little boy. I can't help it. I can't help it. Not with this horrible thing about Drew hanging over me. Please, Elizabeth. Maybe Mr. Kessler thinks this war is a noble struggle being fought for a better world, but I don't see it that way. I can't see it in terms of anything but my son. Elizabeth, don't you think that I feel that too? No. No, I don't think you do. It doesn't tear at your inside the way it does at mine. And you know why? Because he isn't your son. Elizabeth. If he were, you'd feel the same as I do. Drew is my son. From the moment he was born. From the moment they brought him to me in the hospital, he's been my son. And you're able to let him go? I'd let him do whatever seems best for him. Go or stay. Perhaps you'd better talk about it later. There's nothing more to say. No, thanks. Coffee, Mr. Hamilton? I 
can't tell you how sorry oh, I am. Please, no. <laughs> no explanations are necessary. No, but I owe it to my wife to make one. I, I don't want you to misjudge her. So am I not right? Drew doesn't know that you're not his father. That's right. It was decided that the boy should be brought up as belonging to us both. When Elizabeth was notified that her husband had been killed, she was living quite alone. So I brought her out here to my Aunt Jessie, and together we tried to help her through what was a pretty difficult time. I suppose I was in love with her even then, but I didn't know it. I only knew that she needed someone to lean on, someone to shelter and protect her so that life couldn't hurt her anymore. I'm afraid I was wrong. I never let her grow up, never let her face reality. Now that she must, she simply can't. I'm afraid I'm to blame. Oh, no, no, not, not really. You've done everything that anybody could expect. All that love and devotion for the wife, all that care and understanding for the boy, who is, after all, not your son. Yes, but I can't be the one to send him off to war. Elizabeth must do that. Elizabeth must do that. I want to apologize to you, Dad. And you too, Mr. Kessler. I'm sorry I was rude. I'm sorry too. Don't get me wrong, Mr. Kessler. About Mother, I mean. She's been perfectly swell about everything else. But she has some sort of a fixation that if I ever put out a uniform, I'm as good as dead. I can understand that very well. well I'm sorry you're having such a rough time, Drew. Excuse us. Why don't you take it out on me instead of on your mother? Now, let's see. Your birthday is in April, isn't it? Yes, sir. You'll be 21. Yes, sir. And you'll finish your senior year in June, won't you? Yes. Well, now, don't you think that a little patience might not be a bad idea? Hitler won't wait. <laughs> well, you and Pudge can't win the war alone. There are thousands of us, Dad. Why can't Mother understand that this is something that has to be done? Mr. Kessler. Yes. something I have to tell you, because unfortunately you seem to have made yourself a part of what's really a family affair. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the situation. Well, now that you know that I was married before, my husband was killed in the last war, you should understand how I feel. It's as though something was saying, we'll give you a little rest between blows, but only enough to make very sure that you're conscious and able to feel the next one. We won't start another war until your first son is just old enough to be killed. It, it should happen that way again. I... I wish I could help. You can't. You only make it worse. Every time I look at you, I think to myself, a man like you killed my husband. That's quite true. I know I'm being rude to you, and now I'm going to be ruder still. Mr. Kessler, I'd rather you didn't come here anymore. You bring something into this house which is unwelcome. What's that? It's all right, Margaret. Nobody's hurt. What is it, Aunt Jessie? A gun? No, mother, it was only a snapper. Well, I don't see why that... Well, she asked me how it worked, and I showed her how to pull it and made a bed. She screamed. Oh, Margaret. No, no. What is it, Kester? What's what's happened? The song reminded her of a gun. It reminds her of the time the Nazis killed her mother. My father, my father. Mm. Father, I thought you were her father. Oh. May I see one of those things, please? Oh, Margaret. It's nothing, it's a little paper toy. See these tabs? In the center, they're joined with the gunpowder, not much. It just when you pull it, it makes a little tiny explosion. You didn't expect it, that's why you were startled. Let's pull one now. Make another snap. Let me hang you there. And this 
Mustn't she say something about blood? It makes her think not only of the sound, but of the smell of gunpowder, of the sight of blood. Good heavens, surely she didn't see. Yes, she did. You see, Margaret's father was a very great doctor. In Vienna, Dr. Ludwig. He saved my life during the last war. He was not only a great doctor, he was a great man. And while Margaret must call me father because that was the only way we could get her out of Austria, she must never forget that he was her father. Something to be very proud of. I never do forget. When the Nazis came and took over, they found that Margaret's father was a very stubborn man. He had the idea that a doctor is dedicated to humanity and that when a man calls for him to bind up his wounds, does not let him bleed while he questions his political beliefs. And they killed him for that? Oh, yes. And the wife, too. Because she tried to save him. The Nazis are not very patient with that sort of foolishness. When a man dies, his life goes on if he has a child. So Margaret must carry on her father's work and his fight, and so carry on his life. She must be very brave and very good, very strong, and never be afraid of anything. I'm very sorry I made a disturbance. I apologize. Why, we've already forgotten it. I think we ought to go home now. Oh, for the jail, I thought you were staying for dinner. Someone will get Margaret's things. I'll get them. You come with me, Margaret? Yes, thank you. You mustn't be afraid, Margaret. You're in a country now where things like that don't happen. And they're not going to happen. You believe me? Yes, yes, I believe you. Well, then, how about a smile? That's the girl, Peggy. What's that Peggy? Well, that's what we call a little girl's name, Margaret. My mother used to call me Greta. I'll drive you in myself. I won't be a moment. Can I get the car for you? Thanks. Mr. Kessler, I'm terribly sorry. About Margaret? It's shocking to know that a child has suffered so. I'm sorry I said what I did about not coming here again. I think it's just as well that I don't. I understand perfectly. That's very generous of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Hamilton. Goodbye, Mr. Kessler. I'll start thinking about it. I'll get myself all worked up. It's warm for October. John loved this time of year. We used to take long walks in the woods. I can still feel the crunch of the leaves under our feet. And smell that smoky haze that hung over everything. What made you suddenly start talking about John? I don't know. Perhaps it's an anniversary of some sort. No. No, it isn't. Not yet. He has an unusually strong hand. Who? Mr. Kessler. I can still feel his grasp.
surprise for you. Stay where you are. I'll be right back. I'm coming in. No, you don't. You stay right where you are. Oh, that's not fair. Please tell me what sort of a surprise. It's a new suit. I went right out and got it all by myself without you. <laughs> oh, I should get into a big boy. Are you standing near the door? Right smack up. Well, back away a little. Certain perspective. You're playing some kind of trick on me. Here I come, ready or not. Mrs. Hamilton, are you all right? Yes, dear. was over and I wasn't afraid any longer. I'd bought a little Christmas tree because he might have come home any minute and the house would have been ready. I didn't have the slightest doubt, you see. Not one single little doubt. That's the way it was when I walked in there and found the telegram. You come here often? This is the first time I've seen this house since I left it 19 years ago. only passing by from the library. I saw you here. Is this some occasion? Oh, yes, it's an occasion. December 20th. This is our wedding anniversary. It's a long time to remember. That means nothing to you? December 20th? No, I should it? He said, I'll come back. I promised you, I'll come back. They all said that on both sides. And believed it. But some of them could not keep that promise. But suppose he didn't die. Suppose after all these years, he's still alive, but didn't want to come back to me. Because of something that happened. Some wound, some dreadful, heartbreaking wound that made him ashamed to show himself to me. Well, that would have been so wrong of him, you know. So cruel. You torture yourself so. Why? Suppose he were still alive. Suppose, incredible as it would be, he would choose for whatever foolish reasons not to come back. You haven't suffered all these years. You've been happy. Yes, I've been happy. You have a husband who's devoted to you and two fine sons. You have a good life. You should keep it so. You don't think I should tell Drew that he's not Larry's son? I do not. You don't think he should know? Would you have him lose his father twice? You rob him of the father he has, and then tell him the real father is dead, leaving him with none. What is the good of that? Why didn't you use the library at the plant? Because these books in German. There's a German collection there. You lied to me. You're John MacDonald. I'm Eric Kessler. 
an Austrian chemist. All my life I have worked at my profession, except for a few years when I was a soldier. Good reason to remember those years. So have I. I have told you who I am. There is no need for you to pry any more now into my life. Good day, Mrs. Hamilton. office. I'm sorry Mr. Hamilton is in Washington. Mr. Hamilton no. uh, asked me to check over some reports. Oh, they're on his desk, Mr. Kester. I'll get them for you in just a moment. Sorry, I'll get them myself. I'll ask Mr. Hamilton to call you. Hello, Mr. Kessler. Hello, Drew. Nice to see you, Mr. Kessler. I'll be through in a moment. I thought I'd find Dad here. I didn't know he was going to Washington. Well, he'll be back tomorrow. Yes, I know, but I had one to see him today. Excuse me a minute. You have been out the house in a long time. No, I've been rather busy. How are you getting along with your mathematics? Fine. I boned up and got a B plus. With a little more cramming, I ought to be able to pass the test for, well, if I ever take up flying. Well, that hasn't been settled yet? No, but it will be pretty soon. Well, goodbye, Mr. Kessler. It's been nice seeing you again. Goodbye. Dad will be sure to see that note there, won't he? Oh, yes, of course. Sleep yet, Mother? Oh, you're still up. Yes, dear. Mother, what, darling? Who's that? No one you know. It looks like someone I know. Who? Let me see. Oh, I know it looks like Drew. Drew? Oh, I almost forgot what I came in for. Drew isn't home, Mother. Well, it isn't awfully late, is it? Besides, there was a party tonight. That was over hours ago. I telephoned. Why? Well, I was worried. Worried about what, dear? About Drew. Mother, all the things have gone off his dresser. And he's been acting sort of funny lately. And this morning before he left, he gave me his golf clubs. You know, the city's so crazy about it. He went down to the office this afternoon to see Dad. He must have had something on his mind. I thought I'd better tell you, Mother. Yes, Brian, turn the light on. I can't understand it, Mr. Kessler. We didn't have this trouble with the reaction mixtures all day. There's a telephone call for you, Mr. Kessler. No, no. Tell him I'm busy. When did you start this batch? Just before we went to dinner. Well, it's Mrs. Yeah, Hamilton. No polarization. Mrs. Hamilton. She's on Mr. Hamilton's private line. Hello, I'll be there right away. Run off another batch, will you? Watch the temperatures very carefully. Yes, Mr. Kessler. Be right back. He'll be right here, Mrs. Hamilton. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Hamilton. Well, no, I, I don't think your husband could be reached by telephone. He's having a meeting with some British purchasing agents. I think it will last quite late. What's that? Drew? Well, he was here late this afternoon. He didn't come home yet. He didn't come home yet. 
Yes. Yes. Naturally, you're very worried. Look, Mrs. Hamilton, perhaps I can find out where he's gone to. I must ask you to be very patient. I know it's difficult. Yes. See, if I find him, I'll bring him home. some of the fellas off. They're going on a little trip. You're not going with them? Me? <laughs> Whatever made you think that? Hey, Drill. Let's get going. We've only got 10 minutes. All right. All right, I'll be there in a minute. We'll make it snappy. Here we are. Taking things into your own hands. I hope you're not going to try and talk me out of it. That's why I came here. I'm afraid your trip's for nothing. This is the only way to do it. Say, just how did you know you'd find me here? Your letter? My letter? Hmm. The one in the office. You opened that and read it? Yes. That letter was for my father. I know, Drew, but I had to find out where you'd gone. Why? What business was it of yours? Have you forgotten your mother? I know mother, and this is the only way to handle it. A clean break. This way she'll get over it. How about you, Drew? What do you mean? Will you get over it? Hey, Drew, we're getting on board now. If you're going to talk any longer, you better hold your own tickets. He's not going. Not going? Sure, I'm going. Look, Mr. Kessler, I suppose you mean well, but I'd like to have those. Pudge, you better hurry. You'll miss your train. Go ahead, Pudge. I'll make it. OK. You're taking a lot on yourself, aren't you? Just who do you think you are? I'm your father's friend. I'm only doing what he would do if he were here in my place. Look, I can't stand here gabbing with you. I'd like those tickets. You can take them from me very easily. But I don't think you will. All right, I'll go without tickets. I don't think you'll do that either. You see, Drew, I'm afraid you forget you're underage. You could be made to stop legally. I don't want to have to ask that policeman over there. Train now leaving immediately. All aboard. All right, you win. Come on, Drew.
sorry, fellas, but my nursemaid's come to take me home. Gee, you're not gonna let me down, Drew. I counted on our going through this together. So did I. But keep your chin up and I'll see you in April. Hurry, Pudge. Make your report? I think you're old enough to do that for yourself. You're ill, Mr. Kessler. Drew, take Mr. Kessler to the fire. No, it's not. <laughs> I'll get him some brandy. Sooner. Drew, let your mother know you're back. She's been frantic about you. And tell her that Mr. Kessler's here. Yeah. Here, drink this. you off with your wet coat. Now I insist. There. That's it. Elizabeth, Mr. Kessler was going away without seeing you, but I made him stay, because he looked so ill. You can see for yourself. I have some things here I want you to look at. But Elizabeth. Perhaps you can identify them. This, for instance. Read the inscription. Read it. To John from Elizabeth. With all my love. Do you remember? All this worry about the boy has set her thoughts traveling back. Elizabeth, put those things away. Do you remember? How can you remember anything about a man he never knew? But he knew John. Did you? can say, in the war we took many prisoners. He knew him very well. He killed him. Elizabeth. That would be difficult to deny. A soldier fires a bullet. Who can say what mark it finds? Elizabeth, I think you're being very inconsiderate. Mr. Kessler has done you a great service, and you repay it by accusing him of killing your husband. Oh, why don't you thank him and let him go home and go to bed? That's where we ought all to be. No, not yet. Well, I'm going. Good night, Mr. Kessler. Is there anything I can do for you? No, thank you. Elizabeth, I think you're being positively morbid. Open it. It 
is very beautiful. That's what you said when I gave it to you. If you want to believe that I am John McDonald, you can persuade yourself that I am. Will you tell me the truth? This is the truth. If you want to stop living in the present, you can and reach into the past. But you'll never get back what you lost. You'll only lose what you have. And you have so much more to lose now than you had 20 years ago. Why didn't you come back? You promised you would. Why didn't you? Tell me. Was it because you'd been so terribly hurt? You were afraid that, that, that I'd turn from you, that I might not be strong enough for both of us. Didn't you know how I needed you? Needed to help you, no matter what had happened to you, as long as you were alive. Don't you remember how I loved you? Don't you remember the nights we sat like this before the fire in that little house? My head was on your lap, and you sat in that old brown chair. Remember? The one that belonged to you before we were married, and you wouldn't ever give up? There wasn't anyone in the whole world but us. It's wonderful to have been loved so much. So remembered. You used to take my face like this and put it up to yours. Even if your husband should in some miraculous way be restored to you. senses would give back this shattered body to a woman and destroy the memory of 20 years. If I were your husband and I'd come back, that is what I would say. I'm not John. Mrs. Hamilton, if you let me, I will tell you why you want me to be John. It is because you only want the past. You cannot bear the present, so you try to escape from it. In your heart, your son and your first husband have been joined always. Now the boy, like the father before him, wants to go to war. Your life was once all but destroyed by war. You're terrified it will be so destroyed again. You long for the days when you were married first. But not for him. Not John. You want a gay, carefree youth. He stands for in your mind. I come into your life. A survivor of the war, an Austrian, a man who may be still alive because John died. In some way, you've tied all this together. Then, your son rebels against you. You see, you will not even let your son escape from the dead. You cannot set him free because you yourself are not free. You're chained to the past. And the past, with all its good and its bad, is beyond our reach. It's gone. Oh, gone. We must learn to forget it. You and I, and all of us. 
the world. We must live for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is forever. There's the one you're waiting for. No other man is your husband. Oh, darling, I finished the work I had to do and thought I'd drive on home. What is it, Elizabeth? Oh, you here, Kessler? Anything wrong? Oh, no, nothing serious. It's about your son. Drew? Not hurt, is he? No, he's upstairs. I, I'm going up to talk to him now. Mr. Kessler will tell you what happened. I'm so grateful to you. It's nothing. Good night, Mrs. Hamilton. Good night, Mr. Kessler. I know it's late and I don't like to keep you, but tell me about this business with Drew. He tried to do an experiment instead of waiting until he could declare himself a lady. Elizabeth. Are you all right? Yes. Oh, yes, Aunt Jessie. You're a very bad packer. Does it matter? Don't you know by now it's cold in Canada? Well... You mean you're really going to let me go, Liz? If you take the early morning plane, you can catch up with Pudge in New York. <laughs> and don't call me Liz. You're, you're a pretty bad packer yourself. <laughs> There's no law against my saying that you're pretty swell, is there? I can't take credit for this, darling. If you want to thank anyone, you must thank Mr. Kessler. Kessler? Yes, he made me see a lot of things. Mr. Kessler? Oh, gee, Mother. Well, what's the matter? After the way I talked to him. Oh, Drew, you didn't say anything dreadful, did you? That's putting it mildly. Well, what did you say? It was bad enough saying it to him without repeating it to you. But you see, I thought he was butting in. I didn't know that. Look, Mother, you've got to straighten me out with him. Will you go and see him and explain? Tell him. Well, you know what to say to him, won't you, Mother? Yes, I'll know what to say. I'll see him in the morning as soon as we put you on the plane. But if he wanted me to go, I don't see why he brought me home. Why didn't he just let me go? He brought you home so that I would let you go.
Don't you remember how I loved you? Don't you remember the nights we sat like this before the fire in that little house? There was no one in the whole world but us. nice if Drew could have telephoned Kessler from the airport. Darling, he barely made the plane. The important thing to Mr. Kessler will be knowing that I let Drew go. Right, darling. I won't be long. Oh, good morning, Dr. Callan. Good morning, Mrs. Allen. Good morning, Callan. Good morning. Well, what are you doing in this part of town? Your friend Kessler. Kessler? He's not really ill, is he? Don't you know? Weren't you notified? <laughs> Margaret, baby, what's the matter? Everyone who belongs to me died. Oh, no. <gasps> oh. <laughs> How did you get here so soon? You knew I was coming? Father always said if anything ever happened, you would come. Oh. Come on. Come on, we'll get your things. I'll take her. May I be going? Home, darling. 